sweet. Welcome to the After Party Podcast. My name is Connor Maroney, your host, and I'm here today with Reese Matheson, aka Beast Mode. How are we today, mate? Good, mate. Um, thanks for having me on. I'm pretty excited. I think this is only my second podcast I've ever done. So oh, brilliant! Too other easy. Than, it's nice to have a couple with the lines, but this is uh, it's good to do it with a mate. I reckon. Bits out of, out of the box, mate. There's no one, no one watching you too much. Yeah. So you were just saying you're in uh, Melbourne, stuck there for a couple of weeks, was it? Or yeah, so. Boys got stuck down there. Uh, that we played Geelong, and the boys got stuck down there because the Corona hit here. And um, yeah, so we're stuck down there for three weeks, and uh, oh. we've only just got back. But yeah, um, it wasn't too bad. Um, some somewhere different. So yep. I'm, I'm from Melbourne. Got to catch up with my family and come. Oh, brilliant! Friends, so worked out not too bad for me, but um, definitely good to be back in my own bed. Yeah, oath. And uh, have you guys gotten used to like the whole? rigmarole of like COVID training and everything now I'm sure it'd be pretty set in stone now yeah well we had a we had about 10 weeks off there at one stage so we had about 60 days to um just muck around and sort of still did a bit of training but it was tough when when yep. it was really hitting so um but yeah we're, we're used to it now and um it's sort of not too bad it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty easy going at the moment yeah oh it's, and mate I, I didn't get to uh, see you pull up today but uh i was uh wondering what, what are you driving these days nah, nah, i've still got the um uh, mustang but i just i just drove the commodore today just something easy to get me here um so but uh i drive the mustang and i've got a couple in the workshop to getting done i feel nice. like a few cars around as, as yeah as well. yeah so w- w- when did that love start so i mean you, you would have had the, a few down um, back in Geelong, hey, with your dad and whatnot? Yeah, or? so my dad had a few cars, um, and probably when I was 16, I, um, my old man started working on a few cars, and I, I was helping him out, and I just fell in love with old school cars. So yep. um, I always wish I was like 18 or 21 in the 50s, so I could, uh, <laughs> so I could uh, have driven those cars a lot more, but oh, um, instead of costing me... Um, a fair bit of money to rebuild and uh, try to drive today. So yeah, definitely. Uh, but they're cool. They're cool. They're very cool. I'm sure with the up and coming paychecks, you might be able to get another one. <laughs> I also need you to work on my fucking Kia Cerato, the piece of shit. Um, but mate, we'll go back down to the beginning. So you grew up in Geelong, yeah. Um, obviously, footy is just absolutely nuts down south, and I think it's hard for people in Queensland to really understand that. But what, what was it like growing up playing AFL in Geelong? It was just always eyes on the prize for the AFL. Yeah, it is, because it is, like you said, heavy, heavy dominant. I'd say just explain it like rugby up here. Yep. Um, like when you have the Origin Week and stuff like that, it's just basically like footy in Melbourne every week sort of thing. So you get two big Melbourne teams playing, that's 80,000 at the MCG. So yeah, as a kid, I'd, I'd go watch that all the time. And um, it's the same up here with the rugby, I'd say. But um, yeah, it's just, for me, it was just flat out footy. Um, and so school wasn't really a priority. I, I did go. I didn't. I did enjoy it. I wasn't. I, I, tried, I tried not to be a little prick in class. Um, but yeah, right. um, yeah, I was there for my mates and to play footy. So yeah, for the most part there. Yeah, and I was talking to Al Keezy and he was telling me you're a St Kilda fan growing up. I definitely was. So yeah. how, how did that come into the mix? I'm sure that was. Um, no, I don't know. Just young kid, and um, I, I think I like the colours of the jumper. They had the most colours on there, and I yep. think that's what drew me to them. And then. I didn't really know the team, and then as I learned about footy, I, that's who I went for. And yeah, um, surely enough, got to play them in my first year, and they pumped us by about <laughs> eight, eighty points in in one of the games. So were well, uh, there any blokes floating around and still in the St Kilda jersey that you used to watch as yeah, well? Yeah, well, my favourite was Nick Revolt, and he, I got to play, so he he was playing, and he uh, he kicked ten on us, and <laughs> oh, <laughs> took, took a record of marks inside fifty, I believe. So. Um, no, it was a good way to end the season, that one. Oh, mate, what a fucking shocker. Um, I saw as well uh, St Kilda on the weekend. I think it was Eric Banner was there, and he was, like, ripping in, like, on Twitter going nuts. I was thinking, like, who's the, I don't know, who's the staple celebrity for Brisbane these days? I'm sure Jeez. it's a bunch of C-listers, but... I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, fucking Chris Lynn, probably. Yeah, Chris Lynn, he's a great man. He's um, He knows a few of the boys. Brisbane. Yeah, and he's an absolute legend, so... Um, he's, he's probably I'd say, I'd say he's my good mate so I'd say he's our he's our king but we have had um, we have had Harry Potter come to oh really come to the gap for a game I forgot what's, he, what's his name Daniel Radcliffe that's him that's him I always get him mixed up um, yeah, he did you get to, to meet him I, I didn't the skipper did but I, <laughs> I think I was in the box next to him so he come to a game and um, well, so we'll claim him. We'll claim yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. No, have the sure. scarf on so we'll take him bugger Chris Hemsworth yeah. get ratty in mate so then um Obviously worked up the ranks in Victoria there, and then you uh, entered the draft there. I'm sure at the time everyone was probably praying, don't send me to Brisbane. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, obviously it's not the 
biggest following and we were in a bit of a rut at the time as well. What was that, when you did get the news, obviously you would have just been stoked, I'm sure, to make it in and get into the league there. Um, what what was that first initial like feeling of getting in and moving up through to Brisbane there? Yeah, it was, it, you're obviously very excited and just the whole the whole build up to the draft as a 18 year old is um, pretty stressful. You don't know you don't know where you're going to go. Some blokes do because they're uh, they're touted as top picks and um, you sort of get scouted from other teams whether you might turn up there or not. But um, certainly, I didn't know I was going to end up in Brisbane. But I still had a few mates up here that I knew in one yep. being Ben Keys. We did, we had played together. Um, beforehand, so that was all right. No, I got drafted with a few other boys that I knew. Um, Where'd you play with Keezy? Uh, we played in, well, we were in the AIS together. So, yeah, okay, gotcha. Um, for, for a year when we, we became mates, he thought I, I was too cool for him, but we, <laughs> we became mates, and as you know today, we're very good mates. So Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm very close with his family. But, um, I, no, when Brisbane uh, called out my name, I was pretty pumped, and um, you go through a lot, lot of emotions just knowing that you're going to leave home at 18 and that. And I, I wasn't too worried. I wasn't too worried as a um, doing that. But um, it's a big move. It's a big move Definitely. moving out of state as an 18 year old. When, once you uh, realise that mum and dad's not there to do everything for you. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Oh well, I went to that first house a couple of times. A bit yeah, scout looking course, at times. Of course, it's a bit of a frat house with the yeah. boys, of course. Um, but yeah, you learn, and I think it's I think it's beneficial to actually. As a as a young man to to develop into it to an adult, I reckon. So, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I was stoked because I seen it as, as an opportunity to play with a team that at the time was struggling, and maybe it gave me a chance to get a game or um, not be too far off getting a game. So yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, and we drafted some players in that year. We we're trying to rebuild, so it was it was a new look when I sort of got there, and then. Um, obviously the year after it was an even newer look so yeah, um, yeah. yeah I've been through a bit but yeah, yeah. no definitely you had to uh, run through a, a bit of uh, tough times there obviously because those first couple of seasons were a bit rough I remember because I was living with Keezy I think in that 2017, 2018 yeah. oh maybe it was 2017 that was I think, a bit well, of a shocker yeah, I can't remember 2017 we finished uh, the 16 we'd finished second just on uh, second last just on percentage yep. and that was to the, the Bombers who had who had at the time the top up players? So, but we had a massive injury list that we were nowhere near our best players. Yeah, no, point, so. everyone was completely um, out there. But as you said, it does give you a good option, and then it even can be like replicated to the point of like someone like Keezy, like last year getting thrown into the Crows yes. when they were a lot lower, and then you get those opportunities you to do play. Get an opportunity to play, and you, and you, look, you go. look at him now, and um, all he needed was an opportunity to play. He was definitely good enough, just in. In the team that we had last year or two years ago in Brizzy, it was just it was hard. There's just too many people. It was hard. So. Yeah, it was and just he was good enough. To, he was good enough to be playing as we could see now. So yeah, for sure. And they're, they're killing it now as yeah, well. They're like fucking fifth on the ladder. I was like, holy shit. Um, so mate, as well, obviously first year in when you did move in, it was uh, very much known that you were beast mode, and I knew that from the start as well. So I, I very much assumed that it was stemming from like Marshall and Lynch, but. Uh, from you, I'll get the word from the source. Yeah. How did the beast mode start? Um, probably in my under 18s, I had a, I had a trainer. Um, and a lo- I mean, a lot of kids don't, only 18, don't really focus on gym and stuff like that. Yep. I had a mate down there that he loved gym, I loved gym, and, you know, probably just two, two blokes, testosterone, buddy, going head to head. So, and, he, and we would just try to stack up as much weight as we could just stupidly <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. like rev each other up and our trainer would call us out so it just sort of stuck and um yeah i was just we'd carry on up here and to this day i still love doing the same thing so yeah yeah, okay. yeah no well, I, I love the name and then i was also like a lot of things that i noticed like with your game like one of the first like games i ever saw you play well that i like knew of you at the time just obviously because i'm very much footy fucking orientated um but i remember i think it was a game against essendon when you were getting just like the the high tackles coming yeah. up every time, I personally love that shit because my position on the rugby field is fucking find a hole in the game and cheat. Like yeah. I had to be a grub and cheat and get that there. With you, was that very much something that you were aiming to do at the time? Like, oh, you can you can definitely you can definitely exploit people when they. I I sort of know when um, I can slip it and get one around the neck, so it's not. Um, I don't look for it, but once I once see it's it, there, an opening, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely take it. If it's, um, especially in front of goals, like it's, it's a, it's a freebie. It's free, a gimme, free so, kick. Yeah. Uh, they don't like it. I've had a few fifty meter penalties as well to uh, rub me face in the dirt. But at the end of the day, it's a, it's an easy free kick, and um, yeah, yeah, no, completely. I, I, I agree with that there. 
especially that game though, uh, and there's been others that I've seen as well when the crowd really gets in and starts fucking booing. Yeah, do you well, do you like love those sort yeah, of moments? It, it doesn't it doesn't worry me at all. Like, yeah, uh, my first game. Um, I think I had seven of them on debut. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, my first it. game I got booed so by the D's. Um, but um, it did, it doesn't worry me. I, I mean, my mates are on the field with me, and um, I've got my mates back home, and they support you. So I mean, and, and everyone's going to like you. Yeah, That's just no. the way it is. Not like, everyone's no. going to like you. So um, uh, no, I'm, I'm ha- I was happy to keep doing it, and uh, as long as it head. wasn't hurting my team, yeah, um, completely. Then I was, I was all, all good for it. And can that should ever get reversed? Like, uh, like uh, if you like flop real hard, can uh, it? These days, if you do um, a big action, like slip the shoulder up, they they'll pay holding the ball. So oh, you got You got to be yeah, a bit, yeah. you gotta be so a bit more gonna, subtle. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit more of an art to it. You're the master of it yeah. now. Great. So this episode, uh, sorry, this episode of the After Party Podcast is brought to you by our proud sponsor, the Lad Collective. So, Reese, these are a brand uh, from one of my good mates, Eddie and Bill Ovenden. I grew up with them, and they basically uh, made a brand which is uh, sheets for blokes, and that's the only best way that I can yeah, explain. I've it. actually heard of this. Yeah. You have heard yeah, of it, have, yeah, have. brilliant. So, hopefully, we can try to get them out and get a few uh, packages sent out to the Lions yeah. boys. But basically. It's uh, trying to just make sure the blokes getting their uh, sheets in order. There, what's your uh, bedroom situation like at home? No, it's pretty good. Um, pretty good for the moment. <laughs> it is. It, I I struggle for sheets though because I have got the grouse um, super king bed, but yep. the sheets sometimes don't quite stretch over. So I uh, have well, to get on the blow to mum and dad. So for sure, well, uh, I'm pretty sure these guys do have all sizes. They've got uh, bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left, top right uh, straps to rip them in and pull them on, zip up. Um, Zip up pillowcases and magnetic uh, doona covers there. They've got all different colours, sizes, you name it. They've got it. Brilliant. So if you want to uh, check them out, please go to their Instagram at The Lad Collective. If not, go to www.theladcollective.com.au. And um, as well, like another thing was obviously celebrations. Yeah. Again, love them a lot. you got the shotguns always coming out or the yeah. fucking pistol off the shoulder. Always great. But that was something I also wanted to discuss with you because, like, me personally, I love that shit. Yeah. Other people, though, like, you check fucking comments, other people, everyone goes, like, oh, that's not the game. Like, show off, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. It's interesting, though, especially in our culture now where we – all love the NBA, we all love the NFL, we all love these big exuberant players that are actually putting their personality and character into the game. But as soon as an Australian does it, everyone's like, fuck him, like, what the fuck's he doing? You know what I mean? Like, he's being an absolute prick. Yeah. I I never understood that, because I'm like, if you like that shit, like, you should also follow it back over. But uh, how much do you experience that, like, with the Um, whole, like, tall poppy syndrome in Australia and fans and even players that you played with and stuff? Initially, it was it was probably a lot of people didn't like it and there was the old couple out there that obviously loved it. Our, our fans really liked it. They yep. were always telling me before games and what not to, if you kick one, please do it, please do it and then obviously get the other percentage. But now these days, a lot of people do come and say like, oh, is your next goal going to be a shotgun? So um, I think now that people would actually want more celebrations. Yeah. So not that... They want just the shotgun, but I get it's not as negative towards me anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. more of a like, when are you going to do it again? Or would you ever do it again sort of thing? Yeah. Rather than like, you're an idiot. Why did you do that? So um, I think, yeah, it's more encouraged these days. You see uh, my housemate, Charlie Cameron, goes absolutely bananas with celebrations. So you know he gets on his motorbike. So um, I, I think it's more accepted now. But yeah, you, you're always going to have the 50-50s. Like, he's a, he's a showboater or like your fans love it and want to see it when you're you kick a goal or do something well, so... At the end yeah. of the day, yeah, they're in the stands and you're on the field, so yeah, it doesn't really it. fucking matter yeah, about what they it. say. Uh, um, obviously, since then, though, the Lions have just improved incredibly, and that's through draft picks, selections, and all that sort of stuff. How nice was it to be, because you and Ben, many others, were at that stage where it was fucking dire straits, and now the last, like, three years or so been top five basically finishing how nice was that to build and what do you th- was there any other things besides just the draft picks and whatnot and new players coming through that really got you there oh uh, well yeah it's, to start off with it, it's bloody nice because <laughs> we, we were in a dark place and it was tough to actually talk to fans and members and um this they just wanted to know what was going on and why we, why were we not competitive or why were we not a good team and um i know it seems pretty simple that you should be winning more footy games but it's a bloody hard game and um, yeah, and to now to be able to say that we finished second on the ladder and finished in a prelim and 
made finals the last two years is, is so good and to be able to talk to our fans and they're positive towards us um, it's good and it probably started we got a we got a new coach in and to tell you the truth mate I didn't know any better when I walked in I my first coach I got along with really well um, I was just an 18 year old kid how did I know so yeah so I can't really say that he was a bad coach I can't really say he was a good coach because I just thought he was a good bloke yeah so I've got no comments with that but um, our new co- we got a new coach coming in yeah Fags um, great teacher great teacher absolutely ripping um, seems like he's one of the boys as well really yeah, like he's, he's a teacher he's a teacher so yeah. um, he coaching's probably for him yeah um, he's not one of those blokes that have played AFL footy sort of like your Buckleys and those blokes that have come in and so he's a, he's a teacher. Um, he's very good at that. And we'd, we'd had a new manager and stuff come in. So the club got a full sort of rebuild. And uh, we ended up becoming a bit of a destination club getting players over. So, you know, as we got Lockie Neal this year, we got Joe Danaher. Um, yeah, we've had a few come over. So it's it's been it's been a big change. But what, what surprised us was how quick we changed. Yep. We, we were 15th and we ended up on – we ended up coming second – uh, from the year. jump, yeah, from that, and then that last year we come second again on the ladder. So, and we improved by one game, making a prelim. So, uh, but it's definitely a much better place, um, as any athlete would tell you, around the four walls. That when you win in, she's pretty good inside. I could imagine, and is it very? I'm sure a lot of you all now have become very much like equals and whatnot. But on the field, do you definitely notice those senior players like your Mitch Robinson, Zorkos, all that sort of stuff really taking charge out there? Yep, absolutely. But I think now we get we get those boys that lead the way, like your Lockie Neals, your yep. Zorkos, those guys, great leaders, great players. But now that we have 22 other players that can actually stand up, make a great um, contribution on the field, it's an even spread. And that's, that's what a good team does. It's... Um, and uh, like you see, Lockie Neal won the Brownlow last year, but he 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 puts that to he's a star, mate. He's a star, but he puts that to a lot of respect around the players around him and our footy sure. club. So, but he yeah, he's an absolute star. But oh, so as humble we know, as well. He is. He's yeah. one of the best at it. I reckon he's one of the best. Yeah, and so those those recent finals runs obviously got to be fucking heartbreaking at times because I mean that uh, definitely last year, but the year before as well. Just the it was because. The fans as well, like a lot of the games I was going to, just like the energy was just picking up like so much and there's so much momentum going through to the finals. Uh, how heartbreaking was it in the, that first run, especially against uh, Richmond there? Was that that you lost to in that yeah, final? Think, uh, GWS, we lost GWS, to that's 30 right. seconds um, in the first one. And yeah, it was tough because, like I said, the year before that, we, um, we, we'd we come from 15th to second. So we are riding a massive wave and we'd made finals and we'd won one and then... To get done just by a kick after you know thirty seconds to go was was absolutely heartbreaking, and because we hadn't experienced for nine or ten years or something like that, um, yeah, it was tough for the boys. And um, and Brizzy's a really good state, I reckon, for people jumping on board. Like the Gabba got nuts, like absolutely yep. crazy, like nothing like I'd ever seen before. Obviously, I'd been on the bottom of the ladder at times, and then once we finally started, it was absolutely electric in there. And um, but then then we went on last year to make a prelim when we beat the Tigers who end up winning know, yeah. winning the flag in the first final we just couldn't get over the catters so um, once again last year was probably even tougher knowing yeah. that we actually beat the Premiership Tide the week before but just couldn't knock the Cats off and meet them in the grand final um, yeah, Did you guys was, have the week off after the Richmond game? I believe so I think yeah, we did I think, yes. yeah, I think yeah, we you might have because like Yeah it changes pool so we, we did We always like discuss that when it gets into like finals with rugby as well like if you're at the top two and yep. you win that game, you go straight That's to the, the GF, one. and it's sort of like a blessing and a curse because you've got the week off, you're like feeling high and mighty. The exact same thing happened to us last year playing for uni. Like we lost to the, yep. uh, we, so we beat the premiership winners in the prelim, and then they just bounced up through yep. and got that. Do you prefer, do you think the week off, or would you prefer to roll through? It's always hard to say. I, I, know, I think like, it's more situation. So yeah. if, we, if we had had some players from that game get injured, right. um, so uh, and week maybe need a week, help. maybe that can help. But at, I think personally for a player like myself, I'd like to keep playing um, yep. just purely to get form, um, get a run at it, running in because, um, yeah, I, you, you, I know it's a week, but... Um, it feels dangerous. It, it feels dangerous not having a big match like match play and, and Especially uh, when you're seeing Dusty and shit kicking fucking goals the yeah. week you got yeah. off. You're like, you oh, want to no. be you want to be ready. You want to be conditioned. And I know it's only a week, but um, sometimes that's all they need. So. 
Great. Uh, so this episode of the After Party Podcast was brought to you by Bremont. Bremont is an award-winning British luxury watch brand, ma- manufacturing mechanical watches in Henley on Thames in England. Co-founded by brothers Nick and Giles English in 2002, Bremont has made a substantial impact on the watchmaking industry in a very short period of time by making considerable investment in the UK watchmaking facility to be able to manufacture their own case and movement components in-house. The brand remains true to its original principles of aviation and military, British engineering and adventure, as well as manufacturing watches for some of the most exclusive military squadrons around the world. Bremont continues to play an influential role in revitalising the British watch industry, the birthplace of numerous timekeeping innovations still used today. Bremont produce durable watches that look good in the boardroom and can survive the deepest oceans and the coldest of highest mountains, hence the the tagline, Tested Beyond Endurance. The brand is now in the top handful of chronometer-rated watch producers in the world. For more information, go to bremont.com or visit Melbourne Bremont Boutique. Yeah, For me personally, I think think so, but it is situational, I reckon. For sure. And is uh, the Neefel team still floating around at the moment? Has that kicked off yet? That is. Uh, they got round, round one this week, it is. For, oh, brilliant. For the boys, so... And you've, uh, won a couple, you've won a premiership with I've them, won, haven't you? I've won one, yeah. One, yeah. The, I've won one one year, back end of the year... I was playing in the twos and um, they hadn't lost a game all year, the boys, and it was some sort of team. It was it was special. Um, so I think we, we were up by about 80 points at half time, and like I said, we didn't drop a game for the year. Um, yeah. And yeah, we, we went on to win the flag. I didn't get one. I didn't get the one the other year. I didn't qualify for it. But oh, you didn't. I didn't, didn't play too many yeah. games. So for the, ones. the one that two years ago, I just got in for it. So it was it was all happy days. I got to play with Benny in there. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It was good. Do you think with uh, the Neefel team, the reason I say it, like, so with the the Neefel team there, are they all signed or are there a couple of French players as well that are technically um, club players? So they initially they were all signed, but then. Um, now it's moved into Australian wine comp. We have a few academy kids, so they're under eighteen. You're eighteen. Yep. Um, so they they come in and fill up for us, um, fill in a few spots because if we have injuries and you have emergencies in the AFL game, they don't play. So, but you can sign mature players. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a well, pretty. Good it time. seems like a good program, like to have, it, especially to have that sort of second team there, because a lot of the things like the Reds, like all Super Rugby teams, really don't have. Yeah one that's directly underneath them. It's all just like separate clubs and whatnot. So when they're picking these players out, they're just cherry picking yeah, okay. out of like already played games and stuff. And then they throw them in the deep end and they've had no clue. Yeah. So I was going to say, it must be very nice to it, have like people that know the feel when they get the call up. It's good. It's um, because the boys actually, they actually train with the squad, the yeah. AFL squad. They're, they're, some of them are actually on the AFL list. So Right, yeah. But majority of them are, more than 50%. Just yeah, okay. it's, a, it's our top up players that we pick, our academy kids or mature people that we want to say, yeah, you're good enough to come come play on our side, pretty much. Yep. So, um, yeah, it is it's very good. It's, it's it's very well done for sure. And we and we were just discussing before this started that you've been unlucky in a couple of games at the start of this year, just not not getting there and just on that fringe sort of part where you are that emergency player. Do you enjoy being in that position like obviously you'd prefer to be starting but like back to what we were saying and when because i my problem with it is that if you don't play then you also miss out on yeah. playing twos and then you can go weeks without actually playing yeah. does that ever happen and come into play like a little bit throughout a season if you do get stuck there yeah it does um i was medical sub round one this year so yep. if someone had got hurt i was in and i played my first game back after four weeks this weekend so um, oh, I'd missed four weeks just because of the sort of emergencies and then Corona hit and um, games got cancelled. and So you can get stuck and it's a bit annoying, but um, I mean, that's just the industry and there, there's nothing you can do about it. you just got to be ready to go sort of thing. So for sure. I knew sat on the, sitting on the bench that game for round one that I had to... You know, I had to be ready to go. I was drinking Gatorade, eating long. Yeah. I tell you what, mate, my guts were crook after the game. <laughs> you I was just couldn't burn there it and off. And yeah. I didn't get on. And you're so, nervous and you're mate, sitting there like, oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. So you don't know when you're going to get on. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You've got to be ready to go. Completely, I agree. Um, uh, another thing, um, for those that don't know, my uncle... Uh, Paul McConnell, doctor for the Lions. Great friend of mine. Yeah, great friend. And great also friend. great friend of the podcast. And uh, he... Uh, He's a very interesting man. He is one of the smartest blokes I know, to be fair. Like he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great doctor in that, but a very uh, crazy and out there bloke. Do you have any, uh, I don't know if you even have shareable uh, Doc McConnell I, stories. I definitely, I, don't, I definitely don't have shareable stories, but I reckon you've summed him up pretty good. As a doctor, he's, um, 
around the footy club is unreal because yeah. he, he is like one of the boys. I he's seen it all as well. He has seen it all, mate. Um, it just makes me laugh. And, um, yeah, he, he's, he's a very funny man. I, I probably can't share too many stories. <laughs> yeah, but no, you can't. Uh, eh? I'm, I, if people listening, I could imagine, you know, footy club, doctor, just, just imagine it. Like, yeah. Just, yeah, put two and two together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. And, yeah, I, I always think back on that point where he got pushed over in yeah. the Essendon well, game. We still bring that up in slides sometimes. When yeah, oh, he never gets happy about it. He's I not happy. He, he's he not was happy. fucking furious when it happened because I remember they had it on the AFL show <laughs> yeah. and they had it like him getting pushed over and then like the Coliseum falling down and shit behind yeah. him. And he was, that was a filthy fucking period for him. He was not happy about it. Um, but mate, uh, the last sort of uh, section that I wanted to talk to you about as well, obviously something that, again, probably can't share too much from <laughs> either. But um, I've always found it fascinating. So at the end of like a lot of other sports and professional sports, especially, everyone will have like your Mad Mondays and yep. your celebrations afterwards and whatnot. But you boys somehow take it to another level and somehow figuring out going overseas every time. How nice is it to get away and like have those big trips like with all the boys? Because usually everyone just parts off and goes away like is it very much oh, did you guys even get to do anything last year nothing last year because of the um coronavirus there's a few boys that went away uh in australia together which was which is all right but um previous years yeah we've had some we've had some big trips and um it's it's so good to get away after a long year and um because at times it's stressful it's so you boys have gone to like what LA, America, like Vegas, Mexico, yeah, Mexico, yeah. Um, Ripper. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just good to let the hair down and say that, like, have this is your time to relax. But when you get back, be ready to go, sort of thing. So the club's really good with it, um, yeah, as long as you're not stupid, of course. Yeah, and, yeah, of I course. Mean, alcohol and stuff, you're going to be stupid yeah, at times, just but just keep don't the end cameras up, off. Yeah, yeah, keep the cameras <laughs> off. Just don't end up in the paper in the morning, and everything. It's she's all fun and games, but um, no, it's so good to get away because. All we do, we're, we're real schedule-based during the year, so we live off a schedule for so long. And, and it, it is nice. It is nice to be in a routine and um, sort of know what you're going to be doing. But when it's time to relax and you get your own time, it's, 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 it's bloody good to get away with your teammates that you've had a long year with and um, have a bit of fun. So, yeah, those trips are... Those trips are unreal. Yeah, we're the, still talking the, about them today. Yeah, I can, I'd imagine they bloody would. Because yeah, it, it, it's interesting that you guys do go and you go all out. You're like, fuck yeah. it, we're, we're fucking going. Oh yeah, it gets to that point. There's a few boys that um, like it more than other others. That's for sure. The ones that don't have families and even some yeah. other boys, they still have a crack. But um, you definitely you, feel you're, the you're younger, you're younger yeah, boys. Yeah, a yeah. couple, of, couple of years in, uh, you definitely jump on the back of the boys that have already done it, and it just it's it's chaos. Yeah, but yeah. It's good fun. Just like I said, keep the phones away. Don't end up on the paper and the, club, yeah. the club's all good for it. Don't be an idiot. So you'll be all right. Brilliant, mate. Well, uh, hopefully there's no uh, scandals in the future, mate. But no. um, brilliant. Well, thanks for coming on, mate. That's all I've really got to, uh, for you there. But, um, mate, good luck with the rest of the season. Go the Lions and uh, appreciate you coming on. Beautiful. Thanks for having me. Legend. Unreal. Thanks, mate.